Hello, everyone, and welcome to Colby's Clubhouse. Today I got a letter, and it's from Carla in Syracuse, New York. Here's a little bit of what she said. Dear Colby, I am so excited I just had to write to you and the kids and tell you what happened at school today. I have this friend, and I don't think she knows about Jesus being her forever friend. Well, anyway, I invited her to go to church with me, and she said yes. I'm so excited about this. I've been praying for her for a long time, but I never thought God would use me in her life. Wow, Carla, it sounds to me like you've learned that God can use you, no matter how old you are. So keep watching and keep telling others about Jesus. And if you'd like to write to us, we can be reached by sending a postcard to Colby's Clubhouse, P.O. Box A, Santa Ana, California, 92711. We'd really love to hear from all of you. Surprises for you, Colby. Hmm, who could that be? All of my friends are here. All of your friends are here, Colby. Oh my, it's Corinne and Mindy and Andrea and Davy and Lori. Oh, you have all grown up so much, I barely recognized you. You haven't changed a bit, Colby. You're just as cute as ever. <laughs> well. 
I do try to keep my software updated. Hi, Kiara. Hi, Andrea. Thanks so much for inviting us to Kobe's birthday party. Oh, well, I'm glad you guys could come. Kiara, gee, you sure have grown up. So have you. Do you guys remember how little Kiara was when we were all Colby kids? Uh, why don't we go over and some birthday cake? We've got a lot of catching up to do. Colby, your songs and Bible lessons really influenced our lives. Remember Vacation Bible School when you taught us what it means to be the body of Christ? Oh, I remember that. how each of us is an important part of God's family. That's when missions became so important to Andrea and me. In fact, last summer we went all the way to England to tell people about God. Oh my, that is a long way. It took 10 whole hours to get there. Yeah, and this summer we're going all the way to Nepal. Oh my, that is even further. How exciting to be able to put your faith into action. I remember the first time I put my faith into action. Remember how mad I was at you, Lori? <laughs> yeah, I remember. I didn't want you to be part of our vacation Bible school because I was tired of babysitting you. Yeah, I remember. I was being a real pain. Yeah, you were. <laughs> you see, my grandma was in the hospital, and when my mom went to go visit her, I was stuck babysitting her. When I finally got away to vacation Bible school, she followed me. Sounds like my little sister. Oh, there you are, Davy. I've been looking all over for you. Lori, what are you doing here? Mom said you had to take care of me this afternoon so she could go to the hospital to see Grandma. But, Lori, I watched you all morning. I need a break. Can't you just watch yourself? Davy Merritt, I walked all the way here alone in this sticky weather, and now you're telling me to go back home? I can't take care of myself yet. <laughs> Could have fooled me. Well, hello there, Lori. Colby. Davy, you didn't tell me Colby was here. 
Great. Now the whole world will know. Come on in and join us, Laurie. Here, since you're small, you can be the feet of our cardboard body. Could I really be the feet, Colby? Why, of course you can. Colby, you're not really going to let her be in this with us, are you? In the book of James, it says that real love for the Lord is shown when we do what he asks, even though we don't feel like it. <clears throat> now, who could that be? Oh, hey, brother. Hey, twerp. Hey, Colby. <laughs> Phil, it's good to see you again after all these years. It's great to see you, too. There's somebody out there that really should be up here. Yes, there is. I think you should go get her down here. Come on, everybody. Let's bring her down here. Come on. Oh. Christy is our choreographer now, and she's the floor director for our TV show. Oh, Christy. What is it, Danielle? You inspired me to become a reporter. <laughs> Christy was our first ever Ear Witness News reporter. This is an Ear Witness News special report. And now, here's Jennifer Hearswell. We interrupt this program to bring you a special news report. Our Ear Witness News team has learned of a terrible disaster that will strike the world in a matter of days. We have via time delay satellite, the man who has predicted this flood, and claims that God himself has told him of this pending disaster. His name is Mr. Noah. Not Mr. Noah, just Noah. I'm sorry, just Noah. But would you please tell our viewers how exactly did God tell you about this flood? Well, I was just going down the street when all of a sudden I heard this voice come booming out of the sky. Noah, build an ark and put your family and two of every animal on there. Because for 40 days and 40 nights I will make it rain. I tell you what, that about knocked me off my bike. Your bike? Oh, my camel, my camel, yeah. Now we understand that the reaction from your neighbors and friends hasn't been exactly positive. Now look you zoo keeper, you. We also have with us Mrs. Snodgrass from the local homeowners association with an opposing view. Oh, <laughs> hello. Now listen, Noah, the homeowners group has had it with you. It's time you started living like the rest of us. Why can't you just fit in like everybody else, huh? Well, I'm sorry about the animals, but something very important is going to happen here. I don't care if, if Bill Cosby's coming to town. There should be a law saying you've got to live like the rest of us. Shape up or ship out. It looks like this controversy will be going on for a while. You've got to hand it to Noah for not giving in to the pressure. That's all for now from Ear Witness News. Thank you and good night. Curtis, you rained on the wrong person. Oops. <laughs> you were the best. And now those ears have been passed to you, Danielle. I never thought I'd be worthy. <laughs> well, Christy and Phil were back when I received my very first initial programming. As a matter of fact, they helped me build this clubhouse. It looks like it's been holding up pretty well, Colby. Yeah. Well, my friends helped me take good care of it, just like you used to. Wow, I remember watching you guys on TV when I was really little, and I told my mom that when I got big, I'm going to be a Colby kid and show God's love just like you. You can show God's love no matter where you are. Remember when we first learned that, Phil? Yeah, we were working on this clubhouse when Nick accidentally erased Colby's memory. Oh, dear. My goodness, children. I am beginning to remember some things now. Let's see. Oh, yes. Someone was building something. Right, Colby. We were building a clubhouse. Yes, and there was singing. Why, I believe there were children singing with me. Was that all of you? That's right, Colby. Do you remember us now? Of course I remember you, Bobby. Have I been asleep? No, Colby. You lost your memory when Nick turned that knob on the back of your head. Oh, dear. I'm afraid I don't remember very much about that. Well, when that happened, we were singing a song about friends. And you lost all your memory about friendship. And then we tried to tell you that love was the most important part of friendship, but you couldn't remember what love was. And we program a definition of love back in the system. You're all better. Right, Colby? I am feeling so very tired. I believe I'll shut myself down and take a little nap. No, Colby. 
if you do that, you might lose even more of your memory. And with that disk drive not working, right? We don't know how to save your files. Yeah. Oh, I will try to stay awake, Jennifer. But there is still one thing I do not quite understand. What, Colby? Well, I believe I understand what love is, but I am not sure what one is supposed to do with love. Do you keep it? No, Colby. You don't keep it. Love is supposed to be given away. Yeah. Given away? That's right, Colby. You see, the Lord doesn't want his love locked up inside of our hearts. He wants us to give it away to others. Yeah, yeah then others can know God's love, too. Oh, I like that idea. shirts and sunglasses, Colby. I used to think that you guys were really big kids. But you were just about the same age as most of us. Yeah, That's yeah. right. God used us to minister to kids all over the world, just like you guys are doing now. We sure did. We got letters from everywhere. Hey, we get letters too. See, that just shows you that God's using you too. Yeah, I guess you're right. God wants to use you. Not here at Colby's Clubhouse, but... In your schools, in your neighborhoods, in your church, and even in your family. Sometimes that's the hardest place to show God's love. But when we do, God uses us. If you see a special way to give the Lord's great love away, you don't have to wait till you're grown up. Cause God can use you now If you want to tell someone The special things that the Lord has done You don't have 
So, Phil, tell us all what you've been doing lately. Well, right now I'm a high school pastor at my home church, and a few years ago I had the opportunity of going to Russia and Eastern Europe to share the gospel. Oh, my, that's great. And, see, well, we all know what you've been doing, and we really appreciate it. God, you on either side of the camera. You know, God's love is always faithful. His fullness is to all generations. It doesn't matter how old or how young you are, God can still use you. of you watching at home, remember that God can use you too. If you look for opportunities to give his love to those around you, he will give you back more and more. Don't forget to write us. See you next time at Colby's Clubhouse.